major sports events, India and selection controversies. It's simply inevitable, isn't it? We've seen extra eager federations go out of their way for stars like MC Mericom, and we've seen some draw the line and refuse. Champions like Manika Batra, Sushil Kumar, Vikas Gowda, and now Tejaswin Shankar. And that is where the saga currently stands. India's national high jump record holder Tejaswin Shankar, despite being the only high jumper to achieve the Indian qualification mark for the Commonwealth Games, is not slated to compete at the big event just simply because his jump of 2.27 meters did not come at the designated Indian qualification meet but at the NCAA Championships in America. Basically, he did not follow the rules. The case reached the Delhi High Court with the court putting it in as simple terms as possible. Let it not be an ego problem. Between two hearings, the AFI selection committee added Tejaswin and another four athletes who had achieved the qualification mark. And now it's in the hands of the Indian Olympic Association to try to increase India's allocated squad of athletics from 36 to 41 with the Commonwealth Games Federation. Now, as the powers that be make the final decision, this once again raises a question that gets asked ahead of almost every big event. Why does India always have such controversies around selection? Why can't there be one set of rules for everyone to follow? But that's what the AFI were trying, weren't they? The guidelines were there for Tejaswin to follow. Neera Chopra, Seema Punia didn't attend the national meet, but they requested for and received formal exemptions. Tejaswin only has a WhatsApp chat with the national coach, not the selection committee or the AFI. He may have been led to believe an NCAA outing would be enough, but at that level, one knows to get a formal clearance. Especially now when India's medal count at big events continue to increase each time, the level of professionalism needed to handle the contenders also needs streamlining. Think about cricket. Virat Kohli, Rohit Sharma, Jaspeet Bumrah are by far the country's best cricketers. But what if they just refuse to turn up for a training camp one day? Would they be allowed to play the series that followed? A failed yo-yo test means a direct exit from the Indian team. When the rules are strict, the process is streamlined and exceptions are not considered to be the norm. That's how champions function. So why blame a sports federation for trying to maintain high standards? Or miss the fairness in their decision? Yes, the fairness. Think of the 36 athletes named in the Indian athletic squad. Almost all, firstly, competed at the trials, met the qualification requirements, were picked by the selection committee and have been training at national camps and competing in national tournaments. In contrast, Tejaswin has competed in one event in India in the last four years. Who do you leave out in that case then? The athletics team, after all, was given only 36 spots in the Indian Commonwealth Games contingent. Of course, letting Tejaswin compete could have resulted in a medal in Birmingham like it did for the men's badminton team at the Thomas Cup in May. HS Pranoy did not make the cut for direct qualification and should have gone through the trials for team selection, but he was allowed to sit out, rest his body and the result was three big wins in India's historic title run. On the flip side though, Saina Nehwal refused to participate in the trials and so she was left out of the women's squad. The Pranoy decision can be applauded, but when you add the Saina Nehwal context, questions can be asked. Therefore, uniformity, standard practices and strict selection policies are what are clearly needed.